This mountain is far more dangerous than any monster we've encountered so far. I've seen it bring out the worst in us, and it's claimed so many lives in such a short time. All of poor Paralu's friends, all I can hope is that this damn package is worth more than just some trinket. If it can only hold some greater purpose, then maybe this whole damn trip won't be for nothing. But I guess there's only one way to find out. Today's short quest, long rest. everyone welcome back to short quest long rest in our run of icewind dale hi, hi, Jonathan. hi. Oh, oh. <laughs> so nice to have you all uh especially <laughs> given the events of last session well, i give us one more shot i promise we'll get better i'm so sorry for the the traumatic experience i put you through but you know i'm not done uh, yet great <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna keep I going until you cry, mommy. I don't we'll get a get a nice rest here. Um, I mean, didn't we talked about that that we might give it a shot? <laughs> now that we're like, I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we could go back and kill those yetis with their baby and no. just take over their cave. <laughs> uh, we yeah, I'm just saying. You know, we fucking better because I need to. So allow me to sort of recap the the situation as it stands right now. You have ascended Kelvin's cairn up one of a uh, variety of paths leading to its summit. Not quite at the absolute peak here of Kelvin's cairn, but near it, just below the summit. You, in our last session, encountered first a couple of crag cats who unfortunately took our poor boy boy with them. However, you were able to exact your vengeance and destroy those two kitties. You climbed still higher and rescued one of the missing adventurers from a family of yeti. And ascending still higher, found the ruined camp of a mysterious dwarven explorer. Yet the only way... Thing you know him by is Blue Boots, based on the Blue Boots you found him frozen in. Yep, Blue Boots McGee. Unfortunately, the last of the adventurers, Asterix, a tiefling wizard, was found frozen up at the peak. You find yourselves now on a windswept patch of stone and ice, uh, sort of in between two peaks here on Kelvin's cairn. There is a chasm below you that Asterix is maybe about 20-30 feet away from, uh, extending downward about 40 feet into heavy snowdrifts below. The only way up on first glance is back down the path that you ascended. And along this entire trail you've been finding signs of the undead, clear Markers of Artis Simber's passage, as you know that he is up here hunting undead. Artis Simber being one of the people you have a package to deliver to. However, as there is no further obvious trail, you guys have a bit of exploring to do, or maybe even a bit of resting. There is a torn up tent from the previous adventurer up here. I don't know what you're able to scavenge from that, but... It's entirely up to you whether you go rooting through a dead person's belongings. Yup. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. what is everyone doing here on the mountaintop? Um, there's one thing I'd really like to touch on, and as harrowing and ridiculous as climbing this thing has been, several people on the way here have referenced the fact that this isn't really even a mountain. It's kind of just a big hill. 
And, yeah. and like three people have said that. And I keep thinking of it as we're going up at like, this is one of the most dangerous mountains ever in the history of Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm like, no, 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 wait a minute. It's the most dangerous big ass hill. It's not even a mountain. We haven't no, even people, climbed people, a mountain. So people say that. No, 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 no. People say that. It's like, it's like if you live in Wisconsin and you're like, that's, you know, five degrees isn't cold. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. still cold. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Like, that's yeah. not a mountain? No. That's, Kelvin's that's Cairn? Mountain. No, that's, that's our hill. Is a thousand <laughs> feet high. You guys have taken a very winding course to get here. Yeah. Well, you know? Yeah, think about that. A thousand feet. That's like, that's like an afternoon walk. Like, that's how many <laughs> steps you want to get in in a day. Like, <laughs> that's like... <laughs> well, that's usually just, you're not taking them at like a, you know, severe angle like we are. That's true. Uh, Lots of switchbacks. <laughs> uh huh. I got my steps in today. <laughs> climbed the cairn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, climbed the cairn, fought some skeletons. You know, is yeah. a good day. <laughs> fought some skellies. You know, found found a frozen girl. It's fine. Uh, didn't come back with my dog though. Oh God. Had to do extra climbing because there was an avalanche. So nice. yep. That's yeah, true. you we got more than your thousand climb steps it twice. in. You climb it twice. Yeah, we technically. went up, then down, then up again. <laughs> we could go back down to rest. No. <laughs> <laughs> we will rest up here. In, in the, the snow. In the with fr- asterisks. In the frigid cold. Yes. Oh. Is that something you guys want to do? I mean, we do need to rest, but I don't think he, specifically right here is a good spot. No, we should try to find some sort of uh, cover. Yeah. Uh, if we can. Exactly. Like, uh, like maybe even that. I mean, I, I don't want to really go down in that crevice. Yeah, but, you don't. I mean, yeah, but like something like that, somewhere like a, a cave, not the Yeti cave, but something along those lines. I, mean, I guess we go to the Yeti cave. We've already shown that we can fuck Dude, up. Dude, at this point, like, fuck. no way. Well, I mean, like, they, you know, we kind of are at a, a, a standstill. No, you're right. It's stupid. <laughs> but I'm just trying, I'm thinking out loud. Here. I feel you. I feel you. I, I don't know if we'll yeah. find a cave, but at least an overhang or something to hang yeah. out under, right? Is that something you guys want to look for? We should try, I think. Who is taking yeah, charge I, of a survival check to find a place to shelter here? I'll do it. Dreamer, one of you two, please. <laughs> Papa. A twenty-one. Nice. That's our boy. Right. Twenty-one. Is Good. He's... Hot start. He's not an elk anymore, right? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so here at the the edge of this forty-foot deep, uh, about twenty-foot wide chasm, you're looking around and. You know, there's a couple of very obvious piles of snow where it seems to have, like, sloughed off the higher peak and, you know, possibly shelter behind those. But as you're really getting a good look here at the uh, the lip of the chasm, your nature-familiar eyes catch a very narrow, probably like a 12-inch a wide ledge leading downward at an angle into that chasm you know sort of following the edge of the rock wall and you can see faintly through the the blowing snow uh, at the end of that ledge what appears to be the the curved entrance of a cave there so if you guys were to walk along this 12 inch wide shelf along this icy crevasse here Yes, there, there doesn't indeed seem to be shelter there on the other side. Oh, thank God. What's the angle of, like, the cliff face? Is it, like, sheer? Is it, like... It is... You're probably looking at... Let's see, 100, like, 150 degrees. So there is a slope to it. It is very steep. <laughs> nearly vertical. And just that 12-inch that wide ledge there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh. To, to reach what appears to be a a larger opening on the opposite side from you. Yay. <laughs> now at this I time mean... only only Dreamer can can see this, so Ugh. what are you doing? I see something. Oh okay. It's not snow again, is it? No. <laughs> yes. Um 
you want to be specific, maybe? It might be a cave. Okay. He, he kind of looks around. But it's down here. Down, down where? Oh, nine hells. Oh, that's a... Oh. That's a sheer, sheer, sheer little... Oh. Wait, We need hold... to get out of the weather. What? Let me consider something. It, do it, We go down there, or yes, and stay there. Do we then have to climb back up? Well, that would be the natural way, unless somehow that cave feeds in through somewhere else. Twelve in- That 12 inches is going to seem a lot more narrow going up uh, than uh, down. I could go down and check. <laughs> Alone? I, I, it is not so small for me. That's true. 12 inches for her is like two feet for us. Don't like sending you off by yourself. That's true. Um, perhaps, maybe there's an easier way. Maybe we can, uh... So, from what I understand, it kind of, like, it wraps around and it slopes down. Yeah, slopes. And it's like a 12-inch a thing. So, can we... Is there, like, a... Is there a way up above it? Like, can we rope down to it type thing like instead and just make it like so we can just immediately above it, it would be the uh, the mm-hmm. summit which is about 50 or 60 feet above you so from the the uh, cave entrance gotcha, gotcha, it's gotcha. probably about 80 feet from the summit we don't have any climbing shit do we we don't have pythons no, or I do. Tons or however you pronounce it. you do yep oh see we need that's that's what we need then like that's if we can make a, a little wall rope down there then that will yeah there it is on this. the old on the old character sheet a boy the pit a boy <laughs> did i take anything like that i don't think i did although i didn't take it specifically for this there are no I... there are clever ways to use it but i haven't I got, gotten a chance but i'm glad i have it mm, oh absolutely i took um, a grappling hook for something like this but not like not specifically this. I also have a crowbar. <laughs> Between the two of us, we got all types of shit. And a good. grappling hook. Oh, you got a grappling hook I too? Do yeah. Um, but how to make use is tough. So would Krellick and Dreamer even fit in a twelve-inch space? Not terribly difficult for you. <laughs> I mean, difficult, yes, but. You wouldn't be making the upcoming check with disadvantage. That would be more for, like, if you were a large creature, I would ask for okay. disadvantage. Okay, that's good. Tavini, because you're tiny, I would give you uh, advantage on a, a check to make it across. Yay! <laughs> what if I think small? <laughs> <laughs> Do okay. you have enlarge reduce yet? No. Damn. Um, Fuck about you. Fuck you. Three... <laughs> About three sessions back, you told me that if I wanted to wear tight leather pants, I could <laughs> essentially fit in areas that were <laughs> one size smaller than my sure he has experience. <laughs> I literally just edited that episode. It's the only reason I remember. He struggles for 25 <laughs> minutes every morning. You know, because this is a dexterity check, Come on. because this is a dexterity check, I would say that tight leather pants would probably, you'd be doing that check at disadvantage. Actually, I think that's what you said too. It's a joke. <laughs> there you're like, you're like, nope. You get disadvantage on tech deck saves and uh, advantage when squeezing in tight spaces. Yeah. Those are the two. <laughs> I don't really have tight leather pants on though, so I was joking. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So what's the uh, <laughs> read out here? Like, man, plan? my crotch is really cold because it's just almost exposed <laughs> like, to the oh. air. Oh, the David <laughs> Bowie feet. <laughs> There's no buffering air inside. The Bowie knuckle. I'm glad it came back. Ah, uh, don't mock me. It's cold. Anyways, um, silently mocking. Yep, I know. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. We take it slow, and we create like a rope bridge with the the, the pitons slash pythons. How that word? I always say pit. And I always say pitten. Pitten. But I don't know if that's right. Pythons. I think well, it's a python. Y- yep. Pitten. In the uh, <laughs> in the in the uh, comment section, rip us apart for not saying it right at all. <laughs> it makes me think of pittance, like a little pittance. Yeah. Piton. Just was it piton? Piton. Really piton. interesting. 
And did Head you listen off. to one of those things where it's like, Peter? I am resisting every urge in my body to Google the pronunciation because I have a game to run. <laughs> Lando just did that. Guaranteed. Is somebody going across? <laughs> he did, and it's Piton. I yeah, it's Piton. <laughs> Don't worry, we got it for you. Thank you. This yeah. is why I love uh, you. <laughs> well, since uh, I think this is this is okay. So, Tavini, this uh, this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to tie a rope around you, and around myself, so that way you're not going off the edge no matter what. Make your way across. Every five to ten feet or so, I want you to to hammer one of these pythons or pitons in, and then tie off the rope until you get to the cave. But don't worry, you can stay tethered to me the entire time. Uh, 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 yes, I, I believe I can do that. You're my hero today. So, yep, he's gonna he's gonna pull out his hemp rope and start tying himself off, and then tying up to Vini. And I'd be like, Grin, you said you have pitons in your in your bag, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Good good man. Came well prepared. What's it worth Appreciate to you? That. Oh, stop it. <laughs> you just answered it Is over. that or you're going to sleep up now? Yes, here, here, here. Sleep up by the frozen girl. Just take it. <laughs> so only joking so, yeah. on the precipice of death. <laughs> yeah. If you don't laugh, you're going to cry. Mm-hmm. So he's gonna hand over the the pitons over to uh, to Beanie. I'll just go ahead and delete and those. Hand her another length of rope because <laughs> those are gone. Alrighty. Not get those back. The um. Well, when we come back, we can undo them. Yeah, maybe. The short end of the rope that's tied around her waist. She's actually going to loop that little bit through the hook on her lantern so that she doesn't have to hold it. So she'll just tie it there Ooh. at her waist. Clever. Small. All right. So, because you are small, if you could give me a dexterity check with advantage. Yay. Check. A 14. Oof. All right. It's a, it's a little hairy. Nice. The wind is, you know, blowing at you, tugging under your clothes, almost seeming to find places where your body is not in contact with the rock face and trying to pull you out into open air. But you are able to maintain your grip even on this icy stone and very slowly, very carefully hammering pitons in the entire way, make your way down to that ledge slightly below your previous height there. It's only about eight feet square, but there is a dark cave entrance, almost concealed, you know, it's kind of oblique to the cliff face where you can hear that wind sort of gusting through as it descends into the depths there. Hmm. Uh, she will go, like, once she's got the last piton at the edge of the cave, she will go inside and put, put another one just to Ooh, smart. secure it around the corner. Alright. As you... And then she'll s- look. As you step out of sight from the others into this this darkened space. Your lantern catches about 15 feet deeper in a curved wall and what looks to be the top of a set of stairs curving downward. Oh. Yeah, I was kind of worried that this was actually the entrance to the, <laughs> where we're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that thought did cross my mind. Uh. Um... But, uh, Still doesn't yeah. mean we can't camp at the top, though. <laughs> but what can you do, you know? Yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about it? Do Does she hear anything or smell anything? Like, does it smell fresh or... Roll me a perception sad? check. It smells like death. <laughs> <laughs> this cave smells like shit. If that's what you're into. <sighs> a 20, alright. Hey. Ooh, nice, 20. So, still out of sight from the others, you guys have just kind of seen her, you know, almost seeming to step into the cliff face, into that, you know, bleakly angled cave entrance. As you are drawing in a big breath of this, of the much stiller air inside, you are getting whiffs of the grave, you are getting whiffs of mold and ice and unnatural things. It is very faint, in the same way that 
opening up your freezer. You know, when you have freezer burned meat, Ew. it smells off. It is a unpleasant but faint aroma. So she's getting like stale deep cave smell. Yeah. From this. Stale decay in deep cave. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, like, glances at the piton that she's just put into the wall, at the rope that she's tied to uh, on the other side of that piton, and she's like... Hmm. And then she's just gonna, like, very, very quietly kind of, like, untie herself and creep back to the the edge, holding up and, like, grab the rope and peer around and be like, Ah, uh, that is... It is much bigger and creepy. Oh, good. That's what you like to hear, isn't it, Reed? <laughs> creepy. Yeah, creepy is, is the word I was hoping for. Um, is, is everything okay down there? Are we good to come down? There are stairs. Uh, they go down. She's trying not to, like, shout it. Yeah. Because she has enough wisdom to go, hmm, something might live in cave. Gotcha. Like a bear. Yeah, um, yeah. I think with that, Rian will kind of look at Grin. He's like, I, I'm i going to head down there just yeah, to right. make sure. Okay, so go. He, no, come on. Let's go. Yep. So he'll, uh, he'll then make uh, his way down the little path using the, the rope. Yeah, the rope bridge. Yep, the little, yeah, little hand holds to keep uh, close to the keep close to the All wall. Right. I'll say you make this dex check with advantage now, as will everyone, because there's now a uh, a means down. We are awesome. Okay. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Holy shit! Two and a two for you, Death Fell. Sure Our did. Grin? Sure Damn did. It. Oh god damn it. Mm. <laughs> all right. Tell us what so happens. I suppose we're all going across, so I'll follow to you. So Felgrin, as you are the, the first who rolled there, you are the first to start across, you know, gripping tightly to the rope as you uh, make your way down this very steep incline along a narrow shelf. Mm. About halfway the narrow ledge that you're standing upon, your foot hits a, a loose stone and slips out into open air, and you have to hold onto the rope and to keep yourself from falling off completely. I am going to need a uh, I need another dexterity saving throw from you. Come on, buddy. A six. Oh, no. Damn, you man, are really not able well. to regain your footing, oh, no. and you all are watching as suddenly Felgrin, his hand slips and he starts falling uh, 40 feet into toward the snowdrifts below. Okay. Uh, reaction. All right. <laughs> okay. As soon as he goes, I'm like, Grin! And then, again, not even knowing what he's saying, he goes, Nasir Wilg! And casts Featherfall as a reaction. Wait a minute. Let me just make sure. Is it? Yeah, within 60 feet. Okay, just making sure I can cast that far from a distance. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be much better now you're just floating downwards, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say it's better. Yeah, I mean, it stops you from hitting the ground, but, like, I don't... Uh, I guess I can drop the, the grappling hook down to you and get you up afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you all watch as Felgren, you know, he starts plummeting, and all of a sudden it's almost like a string jerks him towards the sky, and he doesn't slow it doesn't stop his descent entirely but you suddenly feel your stomach no longer bottoming out and you drift slowly into the chasm landing in a snow drift up to your waist in soft snow now looking up at the others 40 oh. feet above you oh jesus oh god oh oh he's okay he seems to be okay just checking my pants <laughs> <laughs> Mind me. Nope, we're clean. Uh, we're clear. He said he's like 40 feet down. Mm, man, okay. 
Yep, about 40 so, feet down. I guess we don't need a grappling hook, just a regular rope will do. Um, who's got... Uh, my rope is still technically tied to Tavini. <laughs> like, it's a, hey, someone, lower down a rope to him. Gotta get him back up here. Or, actually, do we want to wait till we're on the other side? Seems like a good plan. Aye, that's probably a better idea. That way he doesn't have to go across again. Um, okay. I'm gonna make my way over there, untie from Tavini, and then lower a rope down to him, okay? Alrighty. That 17, mm. you get across deals. fairly nimbly. And as you get across, the ledge that you're on is slightly below where you are. And looking back and up, you know, you could still see Dreamer and Krellick standing there on the edge. Miri is also back there. And you see her sort of claws gripping the edge of the chasm, those wings extended, catching the wind a little. And she looks from you and she looks up at Dreamer beside her. I'm gonna go. And leaps off the wind buoys her up nice. and she's able to glide to you across yeah i think i kind of put my arms out like catching a little kid you know when they jump down oh that was impressive must be nice <laughs> don't worry we're coming for you bud Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wish i had wish i had i could go down and check on him uh yeah actually that's not a bad idea you can want you glide down make sure he's all right down there she comes to the edge of the shelf that she's now on and tipping forward kind of lets the wind carry her down to land in the snow beside you, Felgrin, and immediately just woof, disappear into the very oh, soft snow cover. Glad you're having fun. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, he's gonna untie from Tavini. <laughs> and like as he's doing it, he's explaining, he's like, oh, I don't know if you saw that, but Grin went off the friggin' edge. It was crazy. But uh, don't worry, we can. He, he came down slow, so we're going to we're going to we're going to raise him back up. And so he's you know grabbing the rope and kind of pulling it up to himself and coiling it, and then starting to feed it back down the the other end, even though the one side's still tied around him. And I think he's going to loop it around the the piton too, the the last one, just to make sure it's a uh, doubly safe. So Krellick. I noticed that you have also rolled your dexterity saves to make it across. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so as you are reeling out this rope, Rian, to bring Felgrin and Miri back up, Krellik starts across and has hardly gotten a quarter of the way there before a big gust of wind sort of tips our dwarven companion off that ledge. Oh. I'm gonna need a dexterity saving throw to try and catch yourself. Holy shit! It's a it's a fifteen. It's a thirteen. <laughs> it's he a rolled a twelve. Oh. <laughs> At least I failed by a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, God! <Gopalo>. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Krellik this time there goes, goes plummeting <laughs> forty feet into the soft snow below. Let's see, we're going to roll 4d6 for this one. Can I, I got another reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I got two, I got two first level spells. If I can, if I can, if I can use it. Again? Yes, I do. If he's fallen, I don't want him hurt. So I think as soon as I see him go again, he's like, he's like, Nasir wig! And I'm like, <laughs> I'm getting good at that. Uh, I don't even know what that one is. <laughs> Seems familiar. All right. Krellick. Uh, you too find yourself sort of jerked short and now drifting down into the snow drifts. And from below you, you know, you see Felgrin looking up at you and you see Miri, her head craned back and sh her eyes kind of widen seeing you coming and she bunny hops <laughs> to the side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you land, be like, hello, and help you to your feet. <laughs> Stands up. Hello. <laughs> Be able to brush that, some uh, snow off your head. That happened. I think, I think Rian is like hyperventilating, like <laughs> panicking at that point. He's just like, oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh Jesus. Calm down. <laughs> Lower the rope. So I, like, I, I am. So he's looking over the edge, looking between like Dreamer, Krellick, Felgren, and then back up to Rian, like, what is going on here? <laughs> Comedy of errors. Uh, so what's going on? I, uh, hey, I think Rian, as he's lowering the rope, looks to Dreamer and he's like, 
I, I don't think I got another one of those in me. <laughs> it's like, you, you better be very careful coming across. <laughs> he starts feeding the rope down to the, the guy. Because <laughs> I uh, dreamer, have out of <laughs> from, from behind you. Oh, God. You know, in the, the direction of Asterix there, you hear the, the crunching of boots as Perilou... Oh. She's been kind of quiet, oh, staying there her. beside her fellow adventurer there, comes to join you at the lip. We're, um, we're going across. <laughs> I mean, I can see the others have gone. Can you make it? <laughs> the dreamer this entire time is just assessing the ledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope, not gonna make it. Um, I might have Shit. something. <laughs> If I am a small enough creature, do I even need to make it? If you ha turn into a creature with a climb speed, then Ooh. you can straight up just make it across. Like a spider? Like a spider? Like a goat? Goats have climb yeah. jacks? I yeah. would imagine. I would allow that a, a goat, being a natural creature on these slopes, would mm -hmm. navigate them with ease. That's true. Although we learned that uh, say, that's dig, not dig always the case. Yeah, well, yeah, they're not avalanche proof. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they get like stick their legs in the ground like roots. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, here you go. Goat. Sure footed. The goat has advantage on strength and dexterity saving throws made against effects that would knock it prone. Nice. Interesting. I would allow that you could skirt around uh, between or along a 12 foot wide. 12 inch wide ledge. And you've seen a goat now, so. Mm -hmm. I'll turn into a goat. Yes. There you go. Can you make a big All enough right. one that Paralu can just ride on you? Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, she's a halfling, actually, so if you're medium sized. <laughs> it is a medium creature. There you go. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> medium goat? Yep. I will say, if you do go across with somebody on your back, you would be doing a roll. Oh. So you, you kind of have a choice here whether you want to guarantee your own crossing or have advantage carrying somebody else. Well, she's going to get advantage anyway, so you might as well just Yeah, take that's, the win. that's true. Yeah, because she's going to need the advantage anyways, and if not, you know, she falls and... But got she's two, exhausted two right now. Um, like, she's exhausted. exhausted? I'm oh, yeah, she... Sure. Oh, okay. She seems pretty winded, even just standing there beside you. 10 4. Yeah, it might be best then. I'll lower my head for her. And, to... uh, Milady. For, for everyone's sake, what does your steampunk goat look like? Oh, yeah. It's my favorite part. <laughs> the. His back and top of his head is that same rusty iron, except like the iron sort of is in thin metal sheets going over the sides. So, like, shaggy. <laughs> hmm. Are the horns uh, the rusted metal? They're actually wood. Oh, nice. Oh, that's Gnarled cool. wood. And then, like, his underside it are the uh, rust orange vines that he's made of. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I like it. As you sort of dip to allow her to mount, Perilou kind of looks at the ledge and looks at you. Right? And climbs onto your back and holds onto those horns on either side with a death grip. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I guess onward? I will make a check now. Oh god. <laughs> Alright. Please. He's got it. Dexterity check with advantage. Watch, he's gonna pull out like a 22. Goats have a 10 dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Bless RNG. Oh, just made it. Oh, 16. nice. Woo. A 16 and a 3, thank goodness. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, true to your goat like nature, you manage to skirt along the edge of this cliff, and Perilou sometimes, you know, she's a bit of an armored acolyte there, her armor is scraping against the stone wall to your left, just kind of reminding you just how perilous of a crossing it is. But you do reach the other side at about the same time that the end of Rian's rope that he's been feeding over the edge touches down beside Felgrin and Krellic. And Perlu hops off your back and goes about ten feet into the uh, the mouth of this cave that turns into a staircase about twenty feet in. 
Yeah, Rian will start trying to hoist them up. Do you want to get a, a fire started? I think we need to rest up a bit. Everybody seems to be quite exhausted, and if we can get out of the weather there, even right at that entrance, it's probably best if we can get a rest there. Uh, not to be that person, do we have any uh, wood to burn? Did you bring any up? Oh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, it's got a... No, I got a tinderbox. I don't have actual wood. Uh, the tent... Dreamer was sacrificing. The tent that was up by the body, did that have a tent pole? It did. It was broken, but you could see the remains of a, a tent pole and for other framework. Hey. Yeah, all we'd have to do is go right back up the thing where two people just fell off of. Dreamer will start going back up the path. Like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, sure-footed like a mountain goat. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, easy enough for you. You're able to get across to the other side and even just nosing through the remains of the tent that's there, the small camp of this mysterious blue-booted figure, uh, you are finding, you know, the proper materials to build and maintain a, uh, a small campfire up here. There's a, uh, a bundle of tightly bound wood sort of corded that uh, somebody would have had on the top of their pack hauling up the mountain. Now we have to get it down as a goat. <laughs> well, if you can get it to the edge and just chuck it at us, then you can turn back. How many times can you transform in a day? I'm on my second one uh, at, for a short rest. Gotcha. So if we got a short rest in, I can do it again. And what's a short rest? That's an hour? That is an hour. Okay. hate to just leave you on the other side of the, the chasm for an hour while you get your rest in. Um, I mean, what could happen? Yeah, exactly. I'd say you're cool. You can't bite that thing with your teeth, carry it down with you. <laughs> you can do that thing that goats do where they ram shit. You can put it at the edge and then just run up and smack it towards me. And I'll catch it. <laughs> That's not gonna work. You don't think so? I think you're I think you're underestimating how large this thing is. Yeah, I know. It's like a cord of wood. It's good. It's, it's a big it's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't there um, two people in the crevasse? Yeah. Let's uh, push it in there. Oh yeah, and then we'll just we'll just rope it up. That's a good call. Good call. Throw it down on their heads. <laughs> what <laughs> kind of work? Teamwork. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong there? They'll just catch it. <laughs> Your puzzle solving skills are to be commended. Yay! Good job, everybody. <clears throat> I will. So... I will knock it into the, the, the crevice. <laughs> yeah. Headbutt. Oh. Why right. are you dropping things on us? <laughs> I don't think they were privy to any of this nope. planning. No, we did not discuss yeah, it. Yeah, no, <laughs> just from the darkness, you hear something falling from overhead huh? and manage to step out of the way in time for it to go, was that, disappear into the snow at your was feet. Was that Dreamer? Is he dead? <laughs> okay. Was it, a was it a bunch of wood? No, you can, it might have been. You can see in the dark. <laughs> Do you want us to just live down here? or The rope's already there. Just first pass up the, the wood. Oh, of course. We're gonna, we're gonna get a fire started, and then when you get up here, it'll be nice and warm for you. Of course. <laughs> Let me just pass up the wood first, he says as he starts collecting it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if he just tied the rope around his waist. Oh, of course, yes. Let me yeah, pass work. up the wood first as he's tying it off. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's getting tied around first? Oh, and man, that's up. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I mean, I, I'm probably not really looking down and paying attention that much. I'm okay. Just for you to get... I'm I'm tying off the wood. He's he's <laughs> tying it around his waist. <laughs> Reed starts pulling him up. Remember like, to be oh. careful, as it's very delicate wood. <laughs> yeah. Reed starts pulling it up. He's like, Ah, oh, damn! This is a lot of wood. It is. Yes, <laughs> it's a lot of wood. He's getting closer and as, closer. As <laughs> Krillick <laughs> just watching, not saying a word. <laughs> yeah, Krillick just watches him rise in the air. He's like... <laughs> as he... <laughs> like, as he peeks over the fucking thing, I just kind of cock my head. They're like, oh! <laughs> yeah, oh, that's fine, too. Yes, you idiot. I'm not sending up the wood first. 
<laughs> Somebody's got to tie off the wood. Oh, that's great. Like, Krellick is down there. He can do it. I'm just saying. It, either way, it would have been fine. It's not like I was going to leave you down there. <laughs> he just holds his hand out. Yeah, he takes it, pulls him up. <laughs> thank you for saving. Yeah. Thank you for saving my life. It's always a pleasure. Just... Actually, we need to talk about that because I'm not sure what the fuck happened back there. We can talk about it. Hi. Right. Okay. Um, in the meantime, Kralik, please tie off the wood. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no one to tie the wood off. Okay. Me, right I'll, up with Kralik. I'll get right on that. <laughs> I swear to God, if I pull up Kralik, <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna drop him back down. As soon as he gets like halfway up, I'm just fucking dropping. It's, it's gonna be like, Kralik. What's the going up next? Wood. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tie the wood. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I was gonna say the difference between wood and Kralik. Big, bigger difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially in full plate armor. <laughs> when you're done tying off the wood. Before it starts to ascend, Miri crawls on top of it <laughs> and just kind of grips onto the rope and wraps her tail several times around it. Hang on tight. There you go. Right. I think Felgren's helping you pull at this point. All right. Cool. So, yeah. Less hands, or more hands to make less work. So. Altogether, yeah. it's about as heavy as Felgren was coming up. Hmm. Tavini's, like, sitting kind of close to the edge not not really and just watching this with fascination <laughs> yeah we're an entertaining group oh yes take take a load off tavini she is occasionally glancing back uh towards the cave like and turning her lantern and then looking back because that's wise nothing she can do at the moment yeah and every time that you turn back and look inside you can see that Paralu has not only just slumped up against the, the uh, one of the walls of this very narrow, like, five-foot-wide tunnel going in, leading to this staircase, but she is absolutely just passed out on bare stone there. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, so, yep, uh, Rian will get the wood up with, uh, with Grin, and then once we got the wood up, I'll lower the rope back down for Kralik. Alrighty. Tavini will go check on Paralu and make sure that she's, you know, Okay. He'll tie himself and wait for the ride. <laughs> Alrighty. So as you're being hauled up, Krellic, Tavini, Perlu is snoring very softly <laughs> as you approach. Has just kind of like curled up in a ball at the uh, along the edge of this tunnel here. Does not respond to your to your presence. Uh, she's going to s- just like set out her bedroll next to Paralu nice. and then just like gently kind of uh, go I'm just uh, I'm just going to roll you into bed okay you are <laughs> yeah, uh, you, but... you are safe just like in case she jolts awake yeah oh um thanks <clears throat> I sorry I I'm I don't normally just do that you know it's no no it... bad form when you're at the entrance, uh, and she kind of motions vaguely towards the uh, the stairway leading down. It, it's okay. It, it, it is okay. Yeah, and I want to make sure your group, you know, kind of gets through it too, since I'd still be a yeti ball if you hadn't come. But for now, friend, just uh, rest. What was your name again? Tavini. Right. Uh, yes. She just smiles and. Gets the bedroll ready for her, and then scoots back to watch the the deeper cave with her lantern, waiting for firewood. You see Perlu also trying to keep an eye on that staircase, but her head starts nodding forward and nodding forward. And finally, it just kind of slumps into her chest, and she leans back against the wall, asleep again. All wrapped up in the bedroll? All wrapped up in bedroll. Yeah. And uh, Krellik, you... Reach the top at about the same time, Dreamer, you started to cross as well? Yep. All right. So everyone is together now at the Yay. entrance oh, only here. And it is, of death. <laughs> it is very cramped. It's as dense as a dying sun. That's where we're all. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. He's. What are you made of? <laughs> he's, not, he's not climbing. He's just got like his arms like 
back. <laughs> His like arms and legs just limp, just being like pulled up by the waist. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> oh my god. Uh oh, Lando's got a meme. Or a gif. Uh oh, Lando. There it is. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> SpongeBob. The SpongeBob okay. wizard meme. The best yep. meme. Yep. So I feel like we get Krellick up and well, I'd say that finally went as went about as smoothly as could be expected. Well, I mean, we all made it out unscathed, so I'll uh, I'll take it. Let's uh, let's all cozy up in the in that cave and get some rest because I don't know about you, but that's the first time I feel I just feel drained after after those two spells. He just nods, kind of wraps an arm around his shoulders, like let's let's have a talk. Don't, hey, okay. don't forget the avalanche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much uh, has happened today. I know. <laughs> like it's been, it's been a crazy one. But uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's get some rest, and then we can push down into that cave. See what uh, see what awaits us in there. All right. So sheltered against the wind. Uh, you're in about a 20 foot long, 5 foot wide, 5 foot high tunnel. Everyone just sort of crammed into it. You find a spot on the floor in the middle of everyone to just kind of make a fire. Uh, those who are closest are in danger of maybe being singed in the night if they roll the wrong way. <laughs> Very uncomfortable experience, but, but livable in the, in the temporary. You can hear the, the wind howling past outside. But it is comparatively still in here, even as close as you are to the cave entrance. And you can see in the flickering of the firelight where the natural rough-hewn stone gives way to smooth walls that curve out of sight down the descending staircase. Every once in a while you get an updraft of that foul smell from below. And, uh... Aside from that, is there anything you guys want to do while you're here before we do a long rest? No, <laughs> I do not want to go down that uh, that hallway first without nope. us all. Yeah, not a ch like... not a chance. I'm posting <laughs> up the furthest in. Yeah, this, I think Krellik's gonna go close to the stairs too. Uh, I think uh, right. I think Rian's gonna just find a spot kind of in the middle so he can watch both both entrances just in case. Miri has curled up on the bedroll with Paralu and just kind of like almost spooned up next to this other halfling. <laughs> All right. Tavini's kind of eyeing those stairs really suspiciously. So she kind of, she sits there for a, uh, a bit next to the fire since she doesn't have her bedroll. And then she's going to get up and like move to where the others are and go down a couple steps. And, op and take out her mess kit. And she's just going to put, like, her knife, her fork, her spoon, her cup, and a pot, like, dotted across the steps. Hmm. As a kind of... Smart. Alarm. Yeah. She doesn't, nice. like... Clever. Yeah, she doesn't... It's very really, clever. She doesn't really have the resources to set up any tripwires or anything, but she's just, like, a bit unnerved by the smell that's uh, that's the beginnings of an artificer right there. That's perfect. I lobby for inspiration. <laughs> I second the motion. Yes. Motion granted. Yeah, absolutely. Take that oh. point. Yeah, that's you. You. you get a, you get an inspiration to me. That's awesome. <laughs> and then she'll like go back to the fire because it's it's warm. She does uh, <laughs> she does an acceptance speech like the fucking mouse. Thank you, thank it's you. Like, I, I'd, I'd like to thank my party members for making this possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost like it's that it's that frame in an anime where somebody has a realization and you see like a, a lightning bolt go from one side of the screen behind their yeah, head that, to the other and their right. eyes kinda widen. Yep, that's like yeah, I don't exactly yeah. You know exactly the shot I'm talking about. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, since you were a little further down the stairs, a little further out of sight from the others down into this place, it's weirdly, it's still cold down there, but it did feel slightly warmer. And that stench increases almost exponentially with every step downward. 
So you guys manage to pass a uh, eight hours, sort of keeping a rotating watch. Uh, uneventfully, nothing comes and harasses you in the night here at this entrance. And though occasionally you hear distant moans rising from below, they're so faint as to be mistaken, perhaps, for the wind or a upgust of wind from below. I just used wind twice in that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a windy experience. Yes, yes. I think during the night, Felgren's going to share a ration with Prelic to kind of smooth over their little tiff <laughs> that they had in the Yeti cave. Um, but other than that, he's going to he's gonna sleep his heart out. All right. Paralu is going to lose one point of exhaustion. She's down to two. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, bad state for this poor figure. So, as morning arrives, morning, again, this being Icewind Dale, is very Rotation. subjective. What are you guys doing? Um, I'm gonna check, see if Paralu's got any rations herself. Yeah. Because if she doesn't, perfect. I got a bunch of them, so. Berry machine. <laughs> I'll offer, oh yeah, I'll offer her a ration. Alrighty, yeah. When she uh, when she awakens, she's just kind of sitting awkwardly, her arms wrapped around her knees by the fire there. And when you go to hand her the ration, oh um, thanks. Hey. Just kind of looks up at you and gives a shy smile before starting to scarf it down. Actually, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give her two so she has one spare for later. <laughs> Is this because I'm a halfling? Look, I know we have a reputation. Oh, wait, no, sorry. <laughs> he, he opens up his pack and there's like, he's still got like 13 rations in his pack. And he's like, Jesus. I'm good. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> he's more rationed than dwarf. Uh, yeah. <laughs> got to keep my figure up. Of course. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Well, that explains why he was so heavy, Rian. <laughs> yeah, no shit. He's 18 <laughs> pounds of like... venison <laughs> in his backpack. <laughs> oh. You, uh, um, ready to head down in there today? No. <laughs> I'm... Do we want berries? Might as well. Yes, give me a berry. He holds his head out. <laughs> I mean, are you... I didn't see any on the slopes when we were climbing up. Watch berries? Yeah. No, that's, yeah, uh... he just kind of points to Dreamer. Yeah, uh -huh. it's his special. He's a druid. I don't know exactly where they come from, but... You say they just, like, sprout in your palm, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit creepy, but they do taste good. Man, I don't know what to make of any of you. Hey, that's, uh... Pretty He's much the most normal, too. and she kind of points to Krellick. <laughs> that's what a fair. Screwed. That's a fair statement, <laughs> yeah. though. It's not... She's not wrong. I know. That's that's sad part about all of this. <laughs> she is not far off at all. Mm. So she gets up and starts rolling up the bedroll to give back to Tavini. You're normal too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a great answer. I was thinking, I was like, thank you. That's true. She is relatively normal. No. Yeah. Um, Dreamer looks offended. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Dreamer being abnormal is better. I can say. Life's more entertaining when you ain't normal. So, how goes the distribution of berries? I mean, yeah. One berry for everyone leaves me four. Ooh, alrighty. Yeah, he just plucks That's one. Awesome. Plucks one for himself. Yep. Pops it in. So, I'm gonna bring us to our new map. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, buddy. And the only thing you will be able to see is something that I call the the, the order box. Your characters. I don't like it. <laughs> the marching order box if you would arrange yourselves in your marching order oh boy yep, sounds about okay right. from oh front is over there <laughs> yep yeah i'd say that's i'd say we're pretty close <laughs> to what we're doing <laughs> i don't know about it's doing stupid <laughs> i don't know about Paralu being in the back though uh, it's always funny <laughs> all right all right, so for the sake of the, the recording, 
On Foundry, when you hold control <laughs> and do the scroll wheel atop your character, they rotate to the left or they rotate to the right. And this gang of dorks, <laughs> all of them are wiggling their characters around on screen. It's very, very hard to describe, but it's very distracting as the DM. Well, the joke's on you, because I didn't know about that before. Now I do, so... Okay, right. <laughs> oh, no. What have I done? All right. Here, I'll be getting Miri in on this, and then... Yeah. I say, Krolik hasn't been wiggling. I wonder why. Uh, Falgren Cause... would uh, stick himself in the middle. Uh, so third in line. Sorry. Whew, you watch. I'm, I'm gonna get you back for that. <laughs> nice. For what? For wiggling. Oh, for wiggling? No. His best qualities? His yep. wiggles. I say, exactly. When I think of Felgrim, I think of wiggles. That's right. Mm. All right, so now to take each of you to the uh, the starting point. Mm. Uh, Tavini will make sure hey, that Perilu stays Go. in front of her so that she can help her if she needs. But mm. she'll also, Very like, nice. um hold up her lantern as high as her little arm can hold, just to try and get some light forward a bit. Oh, we are in essentially our first dungeon. This is Yeah, awesome. your first true dungeon. Oh, no. Do you want me to hold it? I'm so scared. You should be. You will be. He is kind of... He... You will be. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. So right now, there's, all, there's so many references going on. <laughs> just went right, just like a ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. High school. It's right. Pinball. That's what I meant to say. Alrighty. Pitter patter, boys. Let's get at her. Pitter patter. Yep, pitter patter. Let's get at her. So, you enter the cave and walk down. Feeling your feet on crude steps carved into the stone. The cave reaches back into the mountain, curving gently downward for about 60 feet before ending at a large stone door. Past it, dozens of crypt alcoves are carved into the walls on either side of the cave, a, and a veritable army of rotting undead are strewn about the passage, their dismembered limbs limp on the floor. A previous sign of this artist Simber, who has been up here uh, allegedly for days and days fighting the undead. As you proceed further into the depths here, you start to hear something beyond just the stillness around you. Some of the bodies that you walk past start to move, scraping, dragging, hopping across the floor towards you are limbs and torsos and heads of torn asunder undead soldiers. And as you enter the crypt, I am going to need everyone to roll me initiative. Well, at least they're only pieces. Greasy pieces. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? That was the best thing you could have said. Yes, <laughs> yes Krellick. Greasy pieces. So we're going to switch up to our switch up. spooky, spooky depths music. Ooh. No! <laughs> scary, yeah, scary not skeletons. stoked about this. Oh. Alright. Yeah. So... Sliding from around the corner to the north comes a pile of disembodied limbs, torsos, feet, and heads just tumbling over themselves in a swarm towards you, Krellick. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it is a very loud entity, just this clattering of bones falling over one another. And uh, it is going to... Make its attack roll against you. The note pile. Oh boy. That is a 18 to hit. Negative. For our first attack. Negative. Yeah, buddy. That's our Krellic. <laughs> that is our Krellic. That is now going to be Dreamer. What are you doing? I have no idea what's going on back here. <laughs> what are you guys doing up there? I'm doing nothing. I have no idea what's going on. 
Far off. Far off. I would say at the very least you would be able to hear that there is now a commotion further down. There is a I'm so undead avalanche. Uh, help. Both, both, <laughs> both those things just fucking kill Rian right away. It's just like, avalanche, undead, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Two things that almost murdered him so far in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm still gonna stick with my thing of just kind of like sort of poking my head, sort of trying to poke around the corner, seeing what I can see. But uh, I don't think I'm actually gonna do anything on my turn. Alrighty. You at least want to ready a, a dodge or? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Tavini, what are you doing? Uh, she's going to look at Parallel in front of her, and then like try and peer around the corner and then look quick at Peril oh, right. and be like uh, um, is something happening? Yeah, there's a um, a big old pile of stuff heading towards Krellick. and She's kind of like pushed herself up against the wall to make room for you to get past if you need to. Oh yeah, she's gonna she's gonna scoot up. Alright, where are you going? There's, no, there's not really any room so she's just going to go... Uh, if you've got about 30 feet of movement, you can no, get 25. to there or... A half. Oh, 25, sorry. Yeah, it's probably uh, behind Krellick or, or just to the kitty corner of Krellick could work. Yes, yeah, so you'd be able to get behind Krellick. You would be able to... Yeah, she's going to go behind Krellick just so she can help if something hits him. But look the other direction in case there's other creepy crawlies. Already. If something comes and attacks her, she's going to give it a smack, so she's going to hold her action. Now, is that a pillar in the center of the room? That appears to be a, another staircase. Oh, okay. This one uh, spiraling downward. Okay. So what you doing with the rest of your action, to Tavini? She's holding her action for something, like, if something bad, creepy crawly, hands, limbs, whatever comes towards her, she's going to smack it. Okay, dokie. Um, Miri is going to move um, over here and uh, take a whack at uh, at the creature. Alrighty. Um, Jack. It's a 15 hit? A 15 hits. Sweet. There's a, a bunch of armor scraps mixed in with this pile of you know, disembodied parts, but she's able to kind of, you know, pick where to strike when she goes to bite. Awesome. Bite. And, and uh, manages to avoid chomping down on metal bits. Nice. Nice. Oh, wait a minute. 1d4. Why did that go so high? Uh, Because the 1d4, um, oh, it added on the lightning that she can do. Oh, okay. I was doing, do that's good. Okay. I was doing the bite attack anyway. So that's, that's perfect. That's what I wanted to do anyways. Alrighty. Yeah. So what does that look like from her? So she kind of runs up, jumps off Rian's shoulder, and glides over top of that staircase. And as she lands, she kind of skids a little bit and then turns and just lunges out. And as she lunges out, you see, like, from in her throat, you see the electricity start to, like, to spark. And it comes up and, like, almost envelops her teeth. And then she, like, bites into the bones and as the electricity kind of, you know, just spurses into it. Nicely done. Alrighty, manages to come to a stop, almost kind of catching herself on the wall opposite you mm -hmm. and uh, landing on the floor there. See, that is going to now be some of our other combatants' turns. As oh. some of the bodies, missing an arm, missing a leg, missing bits of themselves, but still comparatively intact, start to almost revitalize, reanimate in the presence of this much larger pile of parts as a uh, couple of zombies now start staggering into the mix. And you hear off to your south the banging of fists on doors now in the tunnel immediately to your left. Tavini squeaks. <laughs> <laughs> now, as this creature is a swarm the zombie tell. comes staggering through, wading through all of these body parts and is going to come for you, Krellick, as another comes from around the corner further behind it and is going to make for Miri. 
Don't you touch my daughter! So first one is for Krellick as a six. Second one is for Miri as a five. As a five. Yes. Whoo! Actually scared me for a second. <laughs> Felgren, that is your turn. Okay. Time to initiate defensives, I think. Um, actually, you know, that seems like an okay spot. He's going to clap his hands together. Okay. And as soon as the impact happens, uh, three duplicates of himself appear nice. uh, all around him. Ooh, uh, all right. As he casts a mirror image. Smart boy. Nicely done. So are they all sort of doing the same thing that you're doing, or are they all doing something different? Uh, they're all doing something different. So, uh, you know, one's maybe straightening his lapel. <laughs> the other's running a hand through his hair. And the other one's kind of looking at a flame dancing in his hand. Just kind of shit that he does when he's standing around. All of his idol animations. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alrighty, so mirror image on you. Yes. Rian, what are you doing? Okay, so is can I get like here and like kind of be on the edge of the staircase without falling into the staircase? Yeah, I would I would allow that. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna get here and I am going to take a take a whack at that zombie. Um, the one that tried to bite Miri. Yep, exactly. The one that tried to bite my little girl. Like, oh no, you don't. Give it a smack, smack, yes, smack. We are. Attack. 16. Nice. 16 definitely connects. Nice. Boom. My versatile damage. Yeah. All right. Boom. Six damage. All righty. And this one, it's missing its left arm. Mm -hmm. Still has that right that it's able to, to take swipes with. Mm -hmm. But your blade, you know, just as it's pulling back from its swing against Miri able to slice off a couple of the ends of the fingers. And not enough to diminish its attacks too much, but there's now little bits that have fallen inanimate on the floor. Like, that'll teach you for even trying to touch my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for you? Ah, uh, nope, that's good for me. Alright, Krellick, what have you got? Ah, uh, the zombie that tried to hit me. Yep, that is standing waist deep in body parts that are also trying to attack you. Ah, uh, eleven. Eleven does connect on a zombie, so. Nice. Ah. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh Wait, shit! Oh, Twenty-five. That was, that was attack. Wait, no, My that's bad. the attack roll. Yeah. Whoa! I was like, damn, boy. That's what I was thinking. I was like, how? <laughs> 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 that's that's more reasonable. Okay, now. For his bonus action, he's going to swing with his shield as an improvised weapon attack. Nice. All right. So do I just roll a regular attack roll? Yeah, give me a uh, attack roll with proficiency. So as if you were swinging your warhammer again. In fact, why don't we take that, the 19 that you just rolled earlier for that. Okay. Go for the 25. Nice. Yeah. So if you want to give me damage on that. That's 1d4, right, for improvised? Yep, plus yeah. your strength. Still ain't bad. I'm saying it's going to be at least a good five points of damage. Six points of damage, nice. No, sorry, that was the previous roll. Seven. Ooh. Damn straight, damn, that's almost max damage. That's what's up. Yep, that is what's up. That's so 13 points of damage, one to one. Your hammer batters into this zombie's chest, and you can hear bones crunch as that chest caves in a little. You follow up with a sweep of your shield that almost knocks this thing backwards. It's clawing at the air, trying to keep its balance. Before badass. it sort of snaps back onto you and starts reaching and lunging again for you. Are you moving anywhere? Nope. All right. So boy. Hold your ground. Paralu is going to come up besides you, Felgrin, and seeing what you're facing, targets the larger sort of mass of body parts. <laughs> All of his images greet her at the same time. Uh, a lady. Oh. And he has to make a oh. saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> Skeletal swarm. 
There's four of him now. That's a that's bad. Oh, secret rolls. Oh shit! Uh -oh. Hold on, let me correct that because it should not be secret. Who is the assistant game master? Dude, this shit is rigged. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was like, I, that's I did me. Not it's a seventeen. A higher. <laughs> so the uh, the swarm saves, manages to part as her bolt comes flying into their midst, and oh um. Uh, Yandala protect you. She kind of gives Felgren a reassuring pat on the back, uh, which doesn't, she doesn't cast anything, but then immediately sort of retreats back towards Dreamer. Did she? Did she do anything? I don't know. Don't feel any different. She brightened the cave for a minute. Oh, oh dear. As now behind oh, you, Tavini, yet more body parts animate, sort of pulling together, almost as if gravity is drawing them to a central point, forming this large mass that starts tumbling end over end towards you. God, I knew it. That's why it didn't move yeah. there. <laughs> I knew it! And it is going to make its attack roll against you. That is a 11 to connect. I do not think that connects. No. Oh, hell nope. no. She got she got, uh, she got scale. Hell no. So that now brings us to the other one. That is nearest Mir uh, Miri, Rian, Krellic, and Felgren. If, uh, Rian, roll me a mm -hmm. 1d4. Okay. As this mindless mass is not going to pick a target deliberately. Four. Felgren, alrighty. Oh. oh. Sorry, bud. He's fine. That's okay, you got mirror image. <laughs> so. I don't even need it. It rolls a, an eight to try and connect with you, Felgren, which I don't even think hits one of your mirror images. Yeah, my duplicate AC is 10 plus my deck, yep. so 12. All right. So that is it. <laughs> Yay! Dreamer. Oh, nice try, what dummy. What are you doing? <laughs> I hook my head around the corner. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, get in front of me, please. It's unfortunately, there's nowhere for him to go. <laughs> I know. Oh. It's, it's, it's a little cramped. Now, I will remind you, both of these creatures are swarms. And you see the zombies are standing waist deep in the one that is to your north. Mm. Unpleasant. <laughs> that it is. Right behind those two zombies, Dreamer is going to cast Flaming Sphere. Alrighty. Ooh, that's a beaut. I'm not familiar with this one, but I want to seize it. Five foot diameter sphere of fire appears in an occupied space of your choice. Nice. Ooh. So sort of right in the space of the swarm behind those two. Oh, that's really cool. It did an effect of like a, a fireball just kind of hovering there. No, I, yep. I did that. Oh, you <laughs> added that. Okay. That's still a really cool thing. Thank you, Josie. That makes it so immersive. Oh, you're welcome. I can't imagine their decks is very good. No, no, they gotta have shitty decks. At least the zombies. Yeah, the, right? the mass might have some weird fucking special like. So they have to make a, stuff. a saving throw, right? Because you're slamming it into the mass there. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna slam it into the mass. All right, and it needs a dexterity. You said. Mm-hmm. Five. That is a ten. It fails. Yay! Ooh, they actually have plus two. For nine points of damage. All right. So now within this very confined space, you're getting this whiff not just of rotten meat and cold and stone, but now singed flesh and hair. Ew. <laughs> and there's a sizzling sound from behind this uh, this mass that is swarming around the legs of the zombies. Blech. Anything else for you, Dreamer? Um, no. I'm good. Nope. Alrighty. Tavini, it is your turn next. It's an action to draw her shield, isn't it? Yes. Yep. In this case it might be worth it though. I mean if you're to, gonna have to if you're gonna be stuck going toe to toe, then And to drop it, it's a movement? Free action, I think. It's a free drop. action to Uh yeah, she's going to use her action drawing her shield all right Smart. but she hasn't she's never actually brought it out so plus two ac yeah nice. all right it's anything to do with your bonus 18. action squeak at squeak in disgust at the writhing mass of creepy crawly things <laughs> all right and is that the end of your turn 
Uh, yeah, she's not gonna use her bonus action this turn. All right, what's uh, what's Miri crackalackin? Hmm. She is going to just um take a bite at the uh, or not a bite, a, a claw attack at the zombie. Alrighty. So bloop. Ah, seven. Seven, unfortunately, does not connect. Damn. Okay. Uh, she goes to take a claw, but, like, she's a little apprehensive because it actually took a swing at her. But she kind of, like, you know, jumps forward, but, like, pulls back a little too too soon. Like, at, uh, just a little bit afraid of the, the attack. All right. And the hasty movement from the small dragon at this zombie's feet. Those eyes, dead, sort of snap to her. And it is going to make a slam attack against her. No! No! <gasps> 11? And 11 does not connect on our she little girl, I think. 14 armor class. The other one Yay. that Krellick has been swinging at is going to make its attack roll against him. Misses. And nice! Man, <laughs> they're rolling shit. You hear from behind <laughs> that battering sound that you had heard before. The crunch of rotted wood falling apart as another two zombies shuffle into the hallway. One of them heading for you, Rian. One of them wading through this swarm towards you, Tavini. So, first attack against Rian. Second one against Tavini. <laughs> oh, she got crit. Yeah, she did. So, first one, Rian, you take three points of bludgeoning damage as this creature kind of barrels towards you. And actually, your, your AC is higher than 17, sorry? It's 17 on the dot. That's with my shield. Or 16. Wait a minute. What is my shield? You took, you sorry. have your sword out. Remember, you did versatile damage. Yes. So, yeah, I think I only have 16 then, so it does hit me. But I would like to do a reaction uh -huh. with my sword to try to parry the blow with the, the Midgard weapon rules oh yeah 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 so go ahead and make me a attack roll it has to meet or beat 17 and i get advantage if i'm do if i'm double handing it too yes so if i have both hands on it i get to do uh and i'll do it again for advantage ah, no it'd be uh get. you do the attack roll you were rolling oh i'm an idiot i'm doing damage you're right i'm sorry uh with advantage nah, still, 13 13 yeah unfortunately you go to parry the blow but it's not a move you've mm -hmm. practiced much and the zombie just sort of barrels through you and uh, lands a, a blow. Uh, now for the damage on Tavini there. Uh, eight points of bludgeoning damage as both the fists of this creature just come cracking down on that shield and your arm kind of uh, twinges a little under it. <gasps> I'm going to need those two zombies on the top to make deck saves. Sure can. And let's see. It is now Felgren's turn. They should have made them uh, on your turn with the flaming sphere, huh? At, at the end of their turn. At the end of their turn, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they both fail, so go ahead, give me uh, give me damage on that. We'll fuck them up. Nice, yeah. 10 damage. Nice. I like it. Alrighty, so one of the zombies, you can see the side of its head catching fire, and it's just licking up these old worn clothes, this fur and armor bits that it has. It's not quite dead, the one that's hovering over Miri. It's now just on fire. The other one that Krellick had caved in the chest of uh, finally takes enough damage and it just uh, sort of tips forward dead on the floor there. Nice. Alrighty. Now, Felgrin, what are you doing? He's uh, summoning up a chaos bolt and then splitting it into two. Nice. All right. Twin it, baby. Um, and targeting the ones in front of... Rian and Tavini. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. One in each hand. Respectively. Like, yeah. <laughs> cool. Pew, pew. Like, yeah, two different directions, like a Mexican stand-up fucking gunslinger type thing. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine him standing um, there like Tracer. Exactly. They have both guns, like, hands out to one left, one right, and firing off two shots at the same time. Woo. A 11 was, does geez. connect. Nice. So close. At a 14. Mm. I rolled twice, correct? Yes. Separate damage. Yuck. I rolled a one on all of them. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, three oh, but hold on. oh, my. But it bounces. It bounces. Huh? Remember, 
Why? <laughs> it's your own spell there when you roll the same type of damage. All right. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought it was um, like Max for some reason. Nope. I forgot. Okay. Because we're allowing the twins spelling a Chaos Bolt because it's just, it's so perfect for your character. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm not complaining. That's right. Yeah. Both of them are ones. Okay. Awesome. So I roll it again? Uh, yes. Only one of them bounced. So it yes, would be, the, the yeah, it would be striking bounced. another target within 30 feet. So it's up to you. So why don't I pick the damage, the damage type on the first one? Just so we can. Yes. What is the damage type on the first kind of... one? So it's a... You rolled a two and an eight. Um, we'll go with thunder. Thunder. Makes sense. I, I guess. All right. For that one. And then the second one. Second one is acid. I guess it's, rolled the one. it's just, just the acid. It's just straight up acid. <laughs> it's just the acid. acid. <laughs> All right. Um, and then... And then roll me the attack roll for the ricochet. And whatever it's targeting. Oh, yeah. It's another attack. All right. Is it going... Then it'll bounce to the one that's uh, in front of Regan, as opposed to All behind right. him. Nice. Oh. A nine? Their AC is eight. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> I bet you this kills this fucker. Well, they're zombies! Their AC, is, their AC is really, really bad. They're meant to um, appear in swarms. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. 18 damage. Oh. Jeez Louise. So you have a four and an eight there. Uh, this is going to be a force. I'm going to explode this yeah, thing. That's awesome. All yeah. right. Sorry for the mess. So... <laughs> yeah. If you want, if you would like to take the reins and describe what the hell it looks like when you batter one zombie with, I think it was thunder damage, barely damage another with acid, and then obliterate a third with force. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> the thunder just it looks like just like a little pinpoint of light, I think, but the sound is immense. It's just like a huge thunder clap, right? And the, the acid's just like a little globule of acid kind of splatters on its forehead. But from that sprouts a little tendril of light blue light that expands and expands and whizzes past Rian's head and explodes the zombie in front of him. Just in a just a casserole of magical nonsense. <laughs> All right. A casserole of magical <laughs> nonsense. That is such a good fucking phrase. Oh, I love it. I love that so much. As the, uh, as you're all kind of left with the <laughs> in your ears from the first zombie's death, <laughs> yeah, and you hear Paralu from behind you, mop, 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 mop. <laughs> uh, and that's just in time, like, as you're kind of shaking that off, for the zombie in front of you, Rian, the one that's been attacking mm -hmm. Miri, to just explode. Much of it sort of splatters the ceiling above you and then starts slowly peeling <laughs> down to rain down on the both of you. Yeah, I, I think that would just, Rian would be like, yeah, like, like just stoked as he saw that. And there are four instances of Felgren that look smug. <laughs> all of them just, hmm. All yeah. of the smug. Yeah, just, yeah. they all cross their arms yeah. at the same they, time, <laughs> tilt their head back. They, they all have that fucking uh, idle animation. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else uh, for your turn? To, uh, no, I think I'll let it rest. Rian, it is your turn. Once he sees that zombie go down, he's gonna, like immediately come back around with the sword behind him to try to tag the, the zombie behind him because he knows it's back there taking taking swipes all right attack 19 19 connects awesome. nicely done versatile damage and eight damage eight damage all right yep. let's see if this thing survives constitution saving throw with a dc of five plus the damage taken so dc 13 nice Oh, shit. So, your blade slices through the zombie, and you can feel it, you know, sort of clipping the spine, and this thing almost doubles over, no longer able to support itself. The back legs fall away, but that torso remains animated and continues to try and claw and attack your ankles there. <laughs> what the fuck? I hate undead so much. Yeah, and that's the that's the end of my turn. I don't have any uh All 
Alrighty. reactions or bonus actions. Krellick, what have you got? Um, is there any way Krellick can impose himself in front of Tavini? You would have to move her out of the way somehow. Pick her up, set her behind him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think I have something for this. Ooh. So in the Dungeon Master's Guide, there is an optional rule called Overrun. Let me pull that up for you. Combat options. <laughs> I love these. So, you can make an opposed athletics check to shove uh, as an action or a bonus action to try and charge through the zombie space to get behind it. An oh, so he, he's not so much putting Tavini, but running straight past to the back and yes. like, being behind them. Ah, and then you give that. Tavini room to move back if she needs to. Okay, so it's, acrobatics, that would put me in the middle of the swarm. Sure would. Yep. And it really, for Tavini, it's not, I mean, it helps her a little bit, but if she switches places with you, she's still got the swarm above her, you know. I mean, I'll, uh, I mean, soon as I, well, I guess we'll see. I, yeah, do what you gotta do, man. It's all, it's all fucking, it's all tough right now. We're so squeezed in. There's like very little movement to be done. Okay, well. So Krell you could also is... try and do a shove and push it back from her and try to then occupy its space. Yeah, either way it puts you in the swarm. So acrobat... I don't know if that hurts. Acrobatics? No, it would be athletics. Athletic? Oh. Krell is going to try to shove behind the one that's like he saw go down but still barely hanging on. So he's going to try to get here. Going to like boot it in the head? Okay, well that would just be that would just be movement then. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Then he's going to try to take the uninjured one's attention by booping it. That a boy. Is that one supposed to be uninjured? Yeah, I thought Felgren tagged that one. No, it's got some health removed, but it does still say oh, uninjured. Oh, it's just not enough. Okay, yeah, that's right. 21. Yeah, 21 connects. Give me damage. Jeez. It just had a little acid oh, drip on it. Five. It's a little, okay. little acid. Yeah, it was, it was a tiny little... All right. But bonus, off of that came exploding juice. Nice. Hell yeah, give us that attack roll. 11 uh, connects. Smack him up. Do, 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 smack do. it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh no. <laughs> For Jeez. five, so total of 10 damage on that. And this thing is looking rough now. Uh, pretty badly injured. Anything nice. else for your turn? Is that as far as you're moving? Yep. I'm staying right here trying to pull attention. All right. Atta boy. Uh, Perilou is... Uh, sorry, sorry. She's going to try and move past Felgrin and Dreamer. <gasps> Scoozy. Scoozy. <laughs> and is uh, going to occupy this, this space near the wall, trying to like squeeze herself up against it. And getting a better look at everything that's going on in here, she's going to target the zombie that is currently over Tavini. With another sacred flame. Nice. I feel this one. This one's gonna do it. You do feel this one's gonna do it? Yeah, this one's gonna tag him. Burn its fucking flesh off. So this thing needs to make a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. Thank you. I think it's a Rihanna <laughs> one, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's enough. So, you watch as this little bolt of bright light comes zipping out of Perilou's extended hand as she calls for Yandala. And just sort of drifts past your head, Tavini, very half-heartedly, and <laughs> spreads across this uh, zombie's chest. Oh my god. Oh, uh, hi, sorry. You're doing terrific. Uh, no, but thank you. <laughs> You're doing terrific. And uh, that is now going to be the swarm's turn, the one that Krellick has wandered into. Ooh, hopefully it doesn't get any special shit for you being inside it now. It is deafening. You can't hear anything when you are occupying its space. Mop. It is going to try and slash at you. <laughs> Mop. Mop. <laughs> 13? 13, I don't think connects with your armor no, class. Hell no, you can't hit Krellick. No, 13. <laughs> All right. That brings us to the swarm to the north. Which has a choice between Miri, Rian, Felgrin, and Perilou. Felgrin, roll me a 1d4. Yep, here's the revenge. 1d4. 
That's a me. A two. Yeah, there. That's a Rian. <laughs> yep. Bring it. Seventeen, 17. Oh. again. I don't suppose I can even try to parry this one, could I? <laughs> I mean, you could. It's still a regular attack roll there. Okay, I'll give it a shot. And you've I had your well. turn since, so you have your reaction back. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's so see. So post attack. attack roll. Man, that is shit with advantage. Nope. Three and a two. All right. Not great, nope. not great. So. It took a lot of damage, my man. Oh, no, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do the total because this thing is oh. a swarm. So you're get, you're gonna take the two d eight damage, which is eight. Oh okay, okay that's not so okay. Bad. Sweet, great. That's yeah, that's uh, that's much better. That's like half as bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Instead of seven, like, it's eight. I like that. I'll take it's that. It's literally. <laughs> yeah, I rolled a one and a five literally. with a plus two. I'm barely injured. Now ah, we're all right. All right, dreamer. That is now your turn. It ended its turn next to my sphere, correct? Oh yeah. Yes. And he's making another deck save. Bean footage. Thank you for the uh, <laughs> the reminder of my impending doom. Ooh, Fuck. Fucking twenty. All right. Skulls of Swarm rolls a twenty. Does it take half damage or n- no damage? Half as much on a successful save. Nice. Yeah. That's as a much. good spell. Okay. So that's two damage. All right. That's something. Hey, that's that's a sweet spell. Yeah, it's wearing it down. Uh huh. Yep. And you still have your normal turn. Yep, that's where I, that's where it's at. I am going to use my bonus action to do Bomb of the Summer Court on Tavini. Okay. Nice. I think Where that's... You're level three, so I think that's a 1d6 plus one. Oh, mm-hmm. pl- uh, one temporary HP. Nice! <gasps> nice. nice, Max! Yeah! So, so Tavini... It's six HP oh, plus serves. one temp. I see... And what does Bomb of the Summer the Court feel now. like when you reach out and give someone that little little touch up? It feels like a warm embrace. Aww. Aww. It's like a hug from your mom. It's like the warm hug he can't give. <laughs> <laughs> it's soft like a kitty's tummy. <laughs> <laughs> So that's your bonus action. Anything, any action this turn? <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> Warm like a kid is me. Still channeling Terry. It's a long yep. story. Yeah. Long story. I, I will drop my scimitar, come up to the center here, and attempt to strike down this zombie here in the middle. All oh, right. Shit. He's going sword boy. He's a motherfucking sword boy. I am okay with this. <laughs> because it's more... All right, 18, yeah, give me that damage. More meat between the attacks. Shameless. So it has to be nice. a 14 con save or... No, all right, so it goes down. Yay! Nice! So what does it look like it when over. you uh, you slay this zombie that is you know, almost just the front torso dragging itself across the floor towards Rian? He probably just comes up and just slices across the spine. It just kind of loses its animation and its former momentum and is now the corpse that it was always supposed to be. And I will turn to face the northern swarm. Alrighty. Tavini. Hmm. What are you doing? I believe in Tavini. Uh, believe in Tavini. She doesn't she can't really back away from this thing without drawing its ire. Yeah, you'd have to disengage. So she's going to s- wacky smacky the zombie. I like it. How is it wacky? Do you have like a like a clown like yep. hammer? Yep, exactly. Make it like, Bonk. It's <laughs> like a squeaky hammer. Yep. Tech. No. All right, give us that. Nope. A 10 on Ooh. these connects, so give me that damage. Ooh. Good. For 7. Hey, max damage. Max damage. What? All right. It is going to have to make that con save. It's 8 plus 7, so 15. Oof. Man, they manages to for those saves. Just hang on. You're hearing bones crunch. There's flesh flying. And still, this thing manages to stagger and keep its feet. And reaching for you 
She's just like it's jerks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me. Do not want. <laughs> yeah, Alrighty. Yeah. Anything else for your turn? Uh no, she doesn't really have much she can do with her bonus action at the moment, so. Alright, Miri. Okay, so um uh, equal times to your strength modifier. What's her strength modifier? Just checking to see if she can do that bite again. She oh, she has a plus two. Okay, so so she can do another one of those bites. She's gonna do a bite attack um on the uh the big uh the big swarm pile to the top. All right. And attack. Nice. 20 Connects. Give me that damage. Damn. 19 on the die. Yep. Seven. Not great. Minimum on the D4, but six on the D8. That's above average, yep. I think. All righty. Uh, and yeah, 12. So six would be average. So as bits of this thing are, you know, being burnt, torn up, you know, ripped off, shredded... You're starting to see it's moving more sluggishly. Now at the halfway mark where it will be doing the 1d8 of damage. Ooh, Yay. nice. Progress. <laughs> Is Miri moving anywhere? Uh, no, Miri's staying right there next to her papa. All right, so the papa. remaining zombie is going to take a swipe at Tavini since it is, she is the most recent thing to draw its attention. No, no ED Tavini. So... <laughs> 18 for two yes. points of bludgeoning. <laughs> yeah, ew, ew. Uh, oh, it's just kind of her temporary hit point is gone, <laughs> and she's just lost one hit point. Now, if you want to, if you you do have, well, no wait, you're not wielding a sword. No, it's okay, because I would I would say you could have the same reaction as Rhea in there, but. Ooh, what's the mace? The mace. I'll have to pull that one is. up for you guys. It should be in the Discord. She can break ribs and something else. I can't remember what it was. Ooh, cool. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Oh, yeah, she can remove their AC if she hits. Their dexterity, oh, nice. their dexterity bonus to AC. But she's not really... You don't want to remove that. That's what's making them so easy to hit. <laughs> no, remove more AC. Well, I think if it removes the dex bonus, technically it has a negative one. So therefore, I think it would make it go to zero. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's a weird one. That kind of works. That is weird. <laughs> I, I would is I funny. would say that a zombie would probably keep its AC at yeah, eight. Just treat it yeah. as if it didn't have a an AC bonus. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think it just doesn't care that you broke its ribs. Yeah, it's a zombie. <laughs> that's true. You Here, I just broke. add a one d four of slashing damage now on its attacks. <laughs> now it's got it's got more pointy more yep. pointy bits yep. now. What have you done, to me? Oh no! <laughs> All right, Felgrin, what are you doing? Uh, Felgrin's gonna uncork a magic missile, and he's gonna hit the zombie with one bolt, uh-huh. and the northern swarm with the other. Gotcha, two. gotcha. That is what he is gonna pop, pop, do. Pop, pop, pop. Yes, cast spell. That's not Where's the right the spell. Oh, that's mirror image. I'm a dummy. Let's just cast it again. That one. All right. So six on the first one. It has to make a DC 14 save to stay animate. Yes! Finally, this that's thing goes awesome. down. Jeez. Oh, All right. And then the next two are on the northern swarm. One. I don't think. I th- oh, I think it's multiplying it. Yeah, it's casting them all instead of uh, oh, that's okay. doing the one. Okay, then I'll do that. I'll just click the... There we go. Alrighty. So that much damage. Wearing it down. These things, they're they're meaty. They seem to have a hard time hitting, but they do significant mm-hmm. damage when they do. Yeah, that one was mainly for the, uh, the zombie guy. I wanted him to go away. Smart. Alright, so <laughs> is there anything else you're doing? Are you moving anywhere? No, I think he's in a pretty good position. All right. Uh, so he's he's gonna stay there. Rian, you get your reaction back, and it is the start of your turn. Woot! Not that that reaction thing's worked for me yet, but sweet. Um, okay, same thing. He's going uh, going over the top with the long sword. All right. And ooh, critical failure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not that. A, get fucked. Uh, yeah, get fucked for Rian. I'd say roll me a 1d20. Okay. 
Uh, Don't roll a one again. Okay. What you gonna do oh, with the ten? Lord. What you gonna do with <laughs> all that ten? All that ten on on that dice. Oh my god. <laughs> roll me a, a, a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Josie's like, I'm gonna treat that as a one for that song that you just did. Nice. Uh, dexterity saving throw. Okay. Ooh, five. <laughs> So as you go to make your swing against this thing, you step down onto a piece of skull with slime and meat and gunk on it, and it slips out from under your foot, and you go prone. Oh, fuck. Uh Uh-oh. So as it is still your turn, you're able to use half your movement to get up, but if this were a situation where you wanted to move as well... Mm Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I think he's as he goes down, he immediately is like, nope, nope, and like scrambles back up. <laughs> it's a, I'm not falling into a, a pile of dead bodies. Nope, All right. So. Yeah, that's like, that's worst nightmare material. Yeah, exactly, yeah. especially with the whole undead thing with him right now. Oh, yeah. Krellick, so. what have you got? Well, I guess Krellick's just going to swing into the swarm. <laughs> Spin in circles. Show me what you got. <laughs> I want to see what you've got. <laughs> Ooh, nice. 24. Ooh, 24, yeah. Damn. For 10. Damn, You're dude. You're slapping these just, dudes. Been, uh, Busting them. Been, uh, Krell- 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 can't been, uh, miss. Sweep with the shield. Nice. Might as well. Yeah. What else Ooh. you got? Oh, my God. Nice. 19. <laughs> yeah. So 15 damage. Ah. God. Oh, hell God. yeah. You are our beefy boy. We love it. <laughs> and he hasn't taken a speck of damage. Nope, not a bit. I just love him. Mm-hmm. Yep, he is. The day I pitch you up <laughs> against saving throws. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you already wisdom. failed one of those coming off that fucking mountain. Inte- <laughs> no, that's really wisdom good damage, though. 15. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, are you moving anywhere for your turn? That would be a negative. Negative. And whereas the zombies were about waist deep in this swarm, <laughs> you are like up to your belly button in it, just <laughs> swinging down. You know, when you squish, squish. When you sweep through with that shield, you're just sending body parts flying towards the rest of the team. <laughs> Tavini, he's like, Bring Tavini's it just all. having to <laughs> duck every once in a while. Like, <laughs> it's like it's like a small child in a very macabre. Uh, ball pit. I was just thinking that myself. I was like, dude, he's in an undead ball pit. The poetry of this one is fantastic. A macabre yeah, ball pit. Some... <laughs> I love it so much. That's an episode. Yeah. Macabre, macabre ball, pit. ball pit. That or the what was what was yours? The the fucking casserole magical, of magic. Casserole of of. Of something magical. Casserole of magical nonsense. That's what it was. Casserole <laughs> of magical nonsense. Both those are great I l- episode titles. I like the ball I like the ball pit of horrors <laughs> yep. as a episode name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Uh that is now Paralu's turn. And uh she is going to again attempt a sacred flame against these entities. So that is a dexterity save from a squishy one. God. And seeing that she's having no effect, I'm, uh, I mean, good luck. She's going to go and hide behind Felgren's mirror images. Nice. Which it is going to get a attack of opportunity on her. Oh, you it's fool. not your day. Not your day, is it? An eight, one? eight does not connect. Nice. So you watch as she goes to retreat past Felgren, and this swarm almost like pulls in on itself like the tide going out and starts to form a wave and it crashes down in the spot where she was previously just sending a bit of bone scattering across the floor after her that bounces off the back of her boots gross <laughs> that is now the swarm that Krellick is standing in the ball pit yay nice here comes that ball pit nope. how'd, how'd ball pit do ball pit rolled dog that is now nope. the one well, can... to the north uh, Dreamer, as you're now in there, you give me that 1d4. Hit me! <laughs> Roll a d4 and see Hit me! <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> From left to right, Miri, Rian, Dreamer. <laughs> you can take it down a notch, pal. <laughs> <laughs> 
too much Mountain Dew for dreamers. Does <laughs> <laughs> 16 connect? <laughs> Yeah, it does. All right, so luckily you don't take the 13, you take 10. It's still a lot. Slashing damage. It's still a lot. I said, Grawl Parrot hit me. Ah, uh, oof. All right. And that is now your turn, Dreamer. <laughs> no. Uh, Wait. It's oh, take hold its, on. Uh, it has to make damage. its deck save, huh? Yup. Oh, yay. Oh, Natty won. Suck it, Swarm. <laughs> I made my con save to maintain concentration. Made your con save to maintain concentration. And it rolls nice. a... Ooh. That's a spicy hit. That is a Ten spicy... Points. Spicy this thing it is falling to pieces, which is weird because it's made of pieces. So you feel like there really shouldn't be anything being done. But you could see how now everywhere that it moves, it's leaving behind scattered body parts. So, as that was just your uh, your maintained spell, what would you like to do this turn, Dreamer? I'm going to uh, slice at it with the scimitar again. Mm-hmm. The skimmy. The skimmy, skimmy cocoa puff. Oof. Does yeah, not connect. And then I'm just going to use my bonus just... action to ram it. Alrighty. Ram it. With the flaming sphere. Oh, yeah. Ram. You can do that? <clears throat> yep. <laughs> He's like, he, he can use a bonus action to move it 30 feet. And you can just ram it into something? Yep. Then it stops moving. That is It rolls cool. a six on its dexterity save. Yay. So give us the uh, the damage on that. Eh. Only five. Too, yuck. Still, Still he man. did 15 points of damage to it this turn. Yeah, that's really cool, man. All right. Are you moving anywhere? Nope. I'm good. Tavini, you are up. On deck. <laughs> Uh, a little concerned about Dreamer, hearing the, the crunch, smack, whap behind her. Whap? Rice Krispies. <laughs> She's going to try and deal with this swarm of bits that are just kind of, like, head height with her. Uh, and give it a good old wacky whack. <laughs> yeah, if, if Tavini had gone into it, she'd probably have to be... I don't know, holding her breath so she didn't end up swallowing something. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, swallowed a finger. No. And it's wiggly! <laughs> oh, right. God, it's still moving. <laughs> oh, it's still moving. <laughs> You're gross. <laughs> Unfortunately, a 11 does not connect. Ah. Ooh, these swarms are a little tougher. Yep, that's it. <laughs> oh, They're a, yeah. little, well, a little bit bulkier, not terribly much. Are you moving anywhere or doing anything with your bonus action? No, she doesn't want to go anywhere. She doesn't want to, you know, get its ire. Fair. Alrighty, alrighty. It's a lot bigger. That that Me pile of bits is a lot bigger than her. Mm-hmm. Okay, Miri's just going in for the, the claw attack. Now she All wasn't right. hot with claw attacks. 13, 13 just connects. Nice, okay. Hurry. Five damage. For five slashing damage. Yeah. Guys are so you're mm, so close. Felgren, what have you got? Um Felgren's gonna keep it simple. He's gonna hit the northern swarm with a uh, a fire bolt. Nice. Hopefully he'll hit. Alright, roll me damage. That nice. looks like a hit. Alright. Six damage. Fire damage. Not quite <laughs> Oh no. damn it! <laughs> It is. It has one health left. <laughs> oh, you hate to see it. Yeah, I know. The you hate. It's just, it's just a zombie hand flipping the bird. I'm sorry. I tried to conserve spell slots. It's, it's okay. okay. It's, it's perfectly fine. But that's a good hit for a friggin'. That's a damn good hit for just a cantrip. Yep. Yeah. yeah. At your level. So. All right. So, yep. Rian, which Rian's, one are you targeting? Uh, uh, top one. Gotcha. Yep. I'm gonna try to finish Please, this bad devil off. <laughs> Eleven misses. Uh, son of a bitch. Okay, okay, yeah, and that's uh, I don't think any of my spells are are bonus actions. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so that's it. That's my turn. All right, Krellic. Krellic cackling like a maniac is gonna keep swinging. <laughs> <laughs> Gruel in a ball pit. Oh, crit! Nice critical. Oh. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you've rolled under like an eighteen this entire match. He's out of control. <laughs> Jeez. Just fucking soloing this fucking whole swarm. 
Oh, all here right. Comes the shield. And this is this is for the shield. All right, twenty. <laughs> what the hell? Seven. Twenty damage. Twenty damage. That is awesome. All right. So Krellick. Fucking lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his hammer out on one side and the shield out on the other. He's spinning like a helicopter. Just screaming. <laughs> Just laughing. Krellick, <laughs> this is something your ancestors and their ancestors before them dream of. A fight where you are practically untouchable. You know, you... If we were in the modern day, you're currently that baseball pitcher that no one is allowed to meet their eyes or say a damn thing to them because it would throw off their game. You nice. are an unstoppable force of bludgeoning yeah. within this swarm. You never jinx the street. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the fucking zone, he man. Is. He is. Don't that look him awesome. in the eye. Nope. No, don't. T- no. Leave him alone. There it is. All right. Like, Paralu. <laughs> she is she's gonna do it again. Come on, Paralu. girl. I believe in you. Now concentrate. <laughs> How is this thing <laughs> it's rolling? It's not even her fault. It, I was say it's that fucking swarm just rolling rocks on those saves. Ah, uh, 20 saves. I think he's rolled three 20 saves throughout this fight. That's and ridiculous. you hear her give this little bellow of frustration, like, oh <laughs> I swear this never happens to me. <laughs> I'm still so tired. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. He just pats her on the head. Yeah. Is it you or is it one of your mirrors? All of them. All, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> all four of you briefly turn around from combat to just kind of like ruffle her hair. Yeah, ah. sounds like a ah, like weird. Echoes all four. <laughs> yes, I didn't didn't think that through. My apologies. <laughs> He just turns back around. So the swarm around you, Krellick, is going to continue to try and attack you. Nope. <laughs> Ten? Nope. No. <laughs> you can just skip those turns if you'd like. I mean, literally, he literally can't be touched. All He's right. gotten mad with power. <laughs> yep. Felgren, the, the wreck- You are the thing All that right. attracted this other swarm's attention last, so it is going to make its attack roll against you. Oh, it finally does something, 18 huh? connect. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. But we also have so your mirrors. Have to, uh, so? So you roll like a 1d4, and if it's a I roll a d20. Uh-huh. I roll a d20. If it's a 6 or a higher, it attacks a duplicate. Gotcha. Oh, cool. Nice. Well. Hell yeah. So you all watch as this thing, you know, starts to rise up over Felgren and his duplicates and narrows at the point into almost this spear of chunks of bone that embed themselves through an image of Felgren and into the floor. Yeah, I think he uh, he just kind of like steps back into one of the images, like kind of goes through it. Nice. And then and then wags his finger. Do all of them <laughs> wag their uh-huh. finger? Or... Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. You know what it is? It's that Jurassic Park, uh, 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 you didn't say the magic uh-huh. word. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh my god, that's awesome. Oh, that's what I was channeling when yeah. I did it, yes. <laughs> it is going to start sliding into your space. Just very slowly starting to overcome you, flowing over your knees and your hips. Mm, this is not where you want to be, uh, that's what he says. Alrighty, that is now Dreamer's turn. It's still within five feet of that fire? I I mean, it's corner to corner. It looks like it's just in there. I'm going to allow that it's close enough. Okay. Dreamer, I talk shit. You have to kill it. (laughs) So if it's within range, another... Yep. Talk shit, get split. Oh, if it's on one HP, though. Oh, yeah. Well, then we don't even need to roll for that. So uh, how does your flaming sphere finally, like, cook this thing? Just the flames are just licking off of the sphere, and they just grab onto a bit of flesh, and that flesh gets pulled with the swarm, and then everything it's... else catches flame, and hopefully it dissipates real quickly. Yeah, it's like a hungering flame. Huh. Yeah, there's just now bits of bone and flesh and gunk and metal armor scattered across the floor here. It doesn't even look like there was a monster you were fighting. It's just this heap. And you still have your full turn. Yep. Could I move the sphere all the way to the edge here and then and then slam it into 
the swarm. Because it's just like a mass on the ground, and the sphere can go over five-foot obstacles. Yeah, um, so could you show us the spell again so we can get a better idea of that? Because it is going to be moving through several people. I wonder, like, does it say anything about pathing? Oh, whoops. Let's see, five-foot, uh, any creature that ends its turn. Okay, you can move the sphere up to 30 feet. If you ran the sphere into a creature, da-da-da-da... Okay, yeah, no, it doesn't seem to damage anything along its path, so yeah, unless, you could do that. Yeah, unless you ram it into something. Nice. I would allow... I, I would even, like, push Rian out of the way a little bit so I could <laughs> bring the sphere between us. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> so I'm gonna bring it all the way to the corner and then slam it into the swarm. Alrighty. Nice. Hell yeah. It's a good spell for enclosed spaces. Totally. If this was too... So like, it has honestly, to make it was its deck spell. save. That is a five, so it takes eight points of eight fire points damage. Of damage. Nice. As now, Krellic, someone's muscled in on your territory. <laughs> there is a giant flaming ball that skirts the ceiling, and uh, you can almost feel the heat of it uh, atop your skull, and it sort of appears on the other side of the swarm from you. You can hardly see it over all the body parts that are just almost up to your uh, your chest there. You know, sometimes they rise above your head like waves on an ocean. But you're starting to now get a very strong scent of cooked flesh. It is. It's gross. <laughs> Tavini, it is now your turn. Unless you're moving anywhere, Dreamer. I still have my action. Oh, you still have your action. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to just move diagonally there, so I'm right next to Savini, and swing with the scimitar again. All right. Nope. Nine. Nope. All righty. I mean, you're no Krellic. That's true. Tavini. But then no one is. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I've been jinxed. She's just going to try and bat away anything that flings her way. So anything that Krellic has knocked away she's gonna go pew, pew, pew. uh sorry melee attack <laughs> ping pong it back at him Alrighty, <laughs> she's gonna just give it a good old whack no go back to the dwarf <laughs> <laughs> nope <laughs> 11 unfortunate <laughs> she's only unfortunate, getting the man. bits that are flying off nothing that's like still crawling <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, yeah. and they are like they're pelting your face you're <laughs> pelting your shield and you're just swinging wildly trying to fight this thing. <laughs> it is now Miri. Okay, Miri's gonna move up into this little corner to get the angle on it. And she's gonna take another s uh, slash at him. A nibble nabble. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's a claw. Yep, a claw. 13 just hits, right? 13 just hits. Nice. Hooray. Five damage. Alright, so she, she reaches past dreamer's legs to rake at this mass of body parts and as she withdraws her claw the front half of a hand not the full palm but just mm. enough that there's a couple of fingers together is like crawling up her clawed forearm yeah. towards her <laughs> and she oh oh and she kind of takes a bite of it and <laughs> throws it to one side and then oh oh yeah. <laughs> 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 What? <laughs> that just starts doing gag noises. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, if you've ever heard you a dragon that. dry heave. Yeah. Sound very Felgrin, like your that. turn. Surprisingly, twice. He'll try to hit this thing with another firebolt. Might as well. It's almost dead. <laughs> Die! Nice. That definitely hits. Now this damage roll is going to be butt. Nope. Oh, no, that's it's all solid. Right. Six damage for a cantrip take it yep oh i like it's it it's been quiet it's been quietly an okay battle for uh felgrin here. yeah he's been doing good except for that beginning. so now that several things have been burnt i mean this thing is very close to falling apart but there's now this heavy layer of smoke pooling at the ceiling just this acrid blackness above that you know you can't even see the ceiling anymore it's just so badly burnt up in here that and it smells awful awesome yep Felgrin, anything else for your turn? No. Uh, you will end the turn there. Rian. Okay. Yeah, fuck it. We're gonna give this a shot. 
Yeah, okay. So, let's see if this works first before I go into... No, fuck it. Okay. So, he, uh... Noticing that, like, when he fought it and tried to hit it, that it kind of, like, maintained itself. And he's noticing that when these guys are... These spells are hitting, they're seeming to put these things down much better than, than weapons. He drops his left hand to his side and he starts, like, concentrating. And out of his shoulder, a... Uh, lightning starts flickering like and then starts wrapping its way down his arm into his hand and he's going to cast lightning lure and try to whip out at the thing with a with a, a whip of of pure lightning all righty does it need to make any roll for that or is it an attack oh yeah oh no strength, strength saving throw saving throw that should check creatures hmm. wait a minute it's a just to, to pull 10 feet towards you at night to Oh, okay. So it still does the damage. It only gets pulled if I don't do the... If you mm. uh, successfully beat it. No, it says, or be pulled up to 10 feet in a straight line toward you and then take 1d8 lightning damage. Oh, okay. If it is within 5 feet. Yeah. Yuck. Oh, it only takes the damage if it's within 5 feet of me? Yep. Oh, that sucks. I mean, is it technically within 5 feet of me? <laughs> no, it's not. It's <laughs> but it wasn't pulled. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. It's all right. Yeah, sucker you did save. Successfully <laughs> save two lives, or at least one, today. Yeah. Krellick probably could have lived the fall. Oh, I'm sure you guys both would have been fine. But still. Alrighty. Yeah, so that lightning days, crackles at the end of your arm and lashes out towards this creature and seems to connect with pieces, but it only pulls back towards you a, uh, a foot that is still in a boot <laughs> that then immediately. <laughs> <laughs> gets struck with the lightning from the end of your fingertips and collapses on the uh, the floor at your feet is just a smoldering husk. I think Calgary kind of holds back a laugh. Yeah, he's just like, ha. Huh. <laughs> Krellick, it is now your turn, you whirling, whirling dervish of bludgeoning <sighs> death. Uh, he's noticed the fireball, but I don't think he's noticed much else. He's kind of focused. Got a boy. And he misses. <laughs> His first the fireball, miss. First <laughs> miss. Eight. It's cause it's cause we're attack. Yeah, we're, we're we cursed. Yep. <laughs> we looked them in the eyes. Yeah. You never mess with the streak. Well, the shield but is. the bonus action shield. Yay! Oh, that connects nice. Seven. Half a curse. Krellick, how do you do this? Nice. Nice. Yeah. He just starts spinning and just he feels the uh, feels it kind of given more. So he just keeps charging through with his shield, just swinging wildly. Nice. Batting everything smashy, away. Smashy, smash. Breaks it apart. Nice. Nicely Oof. done. And yeah. uh, as you finish spinning, and the pieces <laughs> now lay scattered across the floor, some of them have been flung into the walls and just <laughs> just landing there and then slowly peeling from the stone to plop onto the floor around you. It suddenly becomes eerily quiet in the tomb again. Well. <laughs> you, that you, was you, great. You, <laughs> I, I, you hear us. So long, toodles, and then his images disappear. Nice. <laughs> oh, that was great, everyone. You did wonderful. Miri, Miri, you did fantastic. You were wonderful out there. Miri isn't really paying attention to you. She has her her mouth open and she's kind of rubbing her face on the stone floor. <sniffs> that wouldn't be how it tastes so gross. Aye, <laughs> that's why you don't bite the undead. But uh, but but you still did great. You still did great. That oh, was thanks. wonderful. <laughs> well, do you think maybe there's no more of them? That <laughs> seems like wishful thinking. Aye, that's, there's definitely going to Once be more. Once the fire's out, Krell is going to step over here so he can like look in the doors, see if there's any more. Yeah, right. I think Rian's going to kind of come up and peek around the edge while he's kind of speaking to him and be like, oh yeah, I'm sure there's going to be plenty more, but uh, maybe we keep, uh, keep an eye out for him. All of you, roll me perception checks. From, from all of us? From everyone. Haha, hey, 18, 20. 10, 10, 10? A lot of 10s. <laughs> Three 10s, of tens. an 18, and a 20. All right. Felgrin, Krellick, as you are kind of, you know, everyone's looking around, sort of sussing out this chamber, 
You're not finding anything in those rooms to the south, but you are faintly hearing, the two of you, what sounds like battle from below. Thank you.